What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, DC Tuku, back in for another video. Today's topic is Dragon Ball Z games and Dragon Ball Z games being competitive fighting games. Now, a lot of people think that, oh, well, sure, any anime fighting game could be competitive. It could be an Evo. It could be, you know, um, a tournament level. And I was on that side of the fence for many years. I always thought, oh, man, I'm so good at this game. They had this game competitively, this Dragon Ball Z game, you know, this Naruto game, whatever the case may be. You know, I could, uh, you know, probably win this. I'm that good. You know, I'm nice to be able to give, you know, have a chance. But I'm here to tell you why Dragon Ball Z, particularly just Dragon Ball Z games now, will never be competitive fighting games. As I've had a talk with many people and seen many things and played many fighting games, this is my favorite genre of game, I had to come to the realization that I was hoping for a pipe dream. You know, and I'll tell you why. Dragon Ball Z games are games that, number one, are niche. In the sense that only Dragon Ball Z fans play Dragon Ball Z games. So, yeah, you can play it casually or something if you're not a fan or never seen the anime. Sure. But you're really not going to care what's going on. You're not going to care to beat the story and, you know, and, and unlock everything. You're not going to care to, you know, just do all these different things that a fan would care to do. And more than likely, you're not going to care to get too good in the game, you know, to an extent. Street Fighter is more universal. You know, Tekken is more universal. And those games have had a longer history than these games have. Well, they've been out for a long time, but those games, when they came out, they were pretty much competitive from the get-go, for the most part. Uh, but these Dragon Ball games, what it comes down to is fan service. If you want to keep the games accurate to the anime, there's no way they can be competitive at the same time. You can't have Goku having K.O. Ken, K.O. Ken times 3, K.O. Ken times 20, you know, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, Super Saiyan 4, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, all these powers that give him a stat boost, a buff, all the way across the board, and then have somebody like, mm, I don't know, Krillin, from any era of Krillin, or any saga of Krillin, Obviously, Krillin is going to be a disadvantage no matter which version of Krillin you pick because he doesn't have a power up. He doesn't have a stat boost. You cannot have all these over the top, crazy OP attacks that Dragon Ball is known for and make it accurate to the show because, just like in the show, certain characters will always lose. It will always be a mismatch. You can't balance a Kamehameha standard from Krillin versus. You know, command man standing from Goku in a power up state. He's automatically going to be stronger because he's in a power up state. And on top of that, his power level by standard should be stronger than the Krillin's. So it's really one of those things that we can't have it both ways, guys. We either pay, pay competitively and keep things to a minimum, or just go all out and go fan service and go balls to wall crazy and just enjoy the games. So. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. We can't do both. We can only do so much. So, that's my take on things. Tell me what you guys think. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Whatever. Until next time, catch you later. Peace.